Hi, today I'd like to demonstrate how you can create a virtual uh, machine image for Azure using Packer and uh, Vagrant for your local machine. So uh, what I do in this demo is I create a build agent and this build agent is a machine that I can use to connect to my DevOps project. The cool thing is that I can decide how this machine looks like by provisioning it the way that I like. And I'm provisioning my machines in this case with an Ansible cookbook. So uh, locally I will show you how to use Vagrant and uh, the Ansible uh, uh, cookbook and that will create for me uh, a machine on, on VirtualBox and I can run this locally and this machine will be connected to my DevOps project. I will do the same thing using the same Ansible cookbook uh, in combination with Packer to create an Azure VM image. This image, based on this image, I can create a virtual machine using the portal, ARM template or a CLI script, or as I will do in my demo, using Terraform. So uh, at the end, you will see that the build agents will be connected to the DevOps project. So uh, I'm going to my DevOps project and you see that I configured a pool named Vagrant Build Agents and currently this pool doesn't contain any agents at the moment. As you can see here, my virtual box manager doesn't contain any build agent as well. So let's create one now. So I checked out all the source code needed for this demo and then I'm going to the build agent folder and to the Vagrant folder. In the Vagrant folder you will see a Vagrant file and this Vagrant file basically is this metadata. Here you see a reference to a shell script which is only setting environment variables which are needed for configuring the build agent. All the software that I want on my build agent is configured using an Ansible cookbook and the cookbook is also within the uh, Vagrant directory uh, in the provision folder and it's called ansible.cfg. So Let's have a look at the send, set environment uh, file, what does it contain. If you checked out this script or this uh, project, you will see that there is a setenv.sample file and it requires two variables. One variable is the SSH, which contains your public SSH key, and the other one is your personal access token. And this personal access token is required to connect to your uh, Azure DevOps project. So let's see how we can generate a personal access token. So within your uh, DevOps, you are going to your profile, you select security, and here you can navigate to the personal access token folder or tab. There you click on the new token, and there you see that you need to fill in a name, the validity uh, uh, period of your token, and then the most important part, the authorization part. So you can of course select full access, but uh, actually for this demo, the only thing what you need is to have the build and the release uh, checkbox enabled. So I've already done that, and my personal access token uh, is here. For example, for my project, I copied it and I've put that in the set end file. So I've just configured my values, and the only thing what I need to do now is uh, say vagrant up. And this will generate uh, my build agents with is, as you can see here, it's based on CentOS 7, and on top of CentOS 7, I'm uh, configuring my machine to, with the Ansible cookbook. So I'll get back to you when this is done. This will usually take a couple of minutes. Most of the time is taking up by copying the binaries uh, for the VSDS agent. So Vagrant has finished creating the machine. Took a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see in VirtualBox. You see that I have a new instance uh, which is running at the moment. So let's go to my Vagrant machine. Uh, I like to SSH into it. What I can do is just simply type Vagrant SSH. Now I'm logged into the machine and you see that I have two folders in my home folder. It's called the VSTS client, which contains the binary uh, which connects to the DevOps project and an agent work folder, which will contain the artifacts for my build and release steps. Now let's go to the DevOps project to my configured pool. 
Vagrant build agents. And here you see that I have my local host, which is my Vagrant machine, which is online. So let's assume I'm very happy about myself. I like this machine, uh, does what it needs to do. And I want this machine to be available as an Azure image. So let's see what we need to do now. I'm now moving to my Packer folder. And in my Packer folder, you see that I have a Packer definition called Build Agent Azure. And here, the first thing you will see that there is a reference to some environment variables. Those variables are needed uh, the same way like in Terraform, because when you want to create resources in Azure, you need to have a client ID or a service principle with a password, and you need to know which tenant and subscription you are using. Furthermore, you also need to configure a personal access token, and that's the same token you used in the step for your local host. So uh, you can do this by creating your own service principle. Actually, what you need to do is uh, expose these variables in your shell before you are running this script. Uh, so let's get to it. The only thing what you need to do is do packer build then the name of the JSON file and usually this will take a couple of minutes as well. So we can see that Pepper has created my image file. I will uh, have you let a look in my Azure portal how it looks like. One final thing I would like to mention is that it's very important to understand and to know that within this uh, definition of this Pepper file we are pointing to the same Ansible uh, cookbook that we used in our local host file. So let's have a look in our Azure portal. So in my portal, I see that Packer created a temporary uh, resource group, which was needed for uh, creating all the artifacts. So let's refresh. This should be cleaned up in a minute because it's still deleting the uh, step for uh, creating the Packer files. But what I've done is I said in my definition, I want to create an image file in this resource group. And within this resource group, you see that I have an image now. So one of the ways uh, to create a VM based on this image is just by clicking on it and then click on the create VM button. Then you see the uh, standard dialogues which you will uh, need to fill in, like giving a host name, which port you would like to configure, and uh, of course the size of the machine you would like to use for your machine. But uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to create an, a VM based on uh, a Terraform script. So I'm going out of here. Uh, let's see if my resource group has been cleaned up already. So you see that Packer cleaned up the temporary resource group and I just have my uh, image at the moment which I will use to create my VMs. So before we are executing the Terraform script, we want to make sure that we are executing this script with the service principle we have defined in our variables. So the way to do that is you just log in with, uh, oh, not this command, with this command. So az login, service principle, then your service principle ID. Don't worry, I've cleaned that up. Uh, then uh, the user credentials and then the tenant you're working on. And if correctly, you should be able to log in here and you would see this dialog. So, uh, let's get to it. So, let's go to the Terraform folder. Uh, I don't need to define any variables because the variables I use in my Terraform are basically the same ones I'm using in my Terraform or in my Packer script. So, let's close this Packer definition. Uh, so, when I'm in my Terraform uh, folder, the only thing I need to do is Terraform init. So it knows which modules to download and to use. Uh, so, so here Terraform recognizes that it is uh, needing the resource manager for Azure resources. As you can see, I've defined two own modules. Uh, so there is a folder uh, or a module uh, named network, which contains my network definition. And I got one with a VM1. If you want to have multiple VMs, what you can do is just copy this folder, rename it, and uh, use uh, 
so let's show you let's go to vm1 so you can just copy this complete folder and name it for example vm2 the only thing what you need to do is in the vm2 folder change the values of the variables uh, for example the build agent one or this is one is mandatory and the ip address the rest you can leave the same so i've initialized it the only thing i am doing now it's terraform plan i'm going to define a definition file or plan file test that out terraform will evaluate if this is possible within my subscription if, this, if there are resources which already exist or not, for example. So this will take not too long usually. So it says, okay, it's okay. We can uh, execute this Terraform template. Uh, what I'd like you to show is, let's go to the VM1. Let's go to the Terraform definition. Within the Terraform definition, you see I'm using the networks and all that stuff. But what's most important to know is that I'm using a custom image. And here in the custom image, so this is the extension. So one moment. So this is the virtual machine. The virtual machine is referring to a store image reference. And here I'm defining the image custom ID. And the custom ID is the same name that I used for the uh, for the for the packer definition. Mm, and the last thing what you need to know, I'm also executing an extension, a custom script, and this is actually the script that is being used. Uh, in order to configure the connection between your VM and your uh, and your DevOps project. So this one is responsible for connecting your uh, virtual machine to your DevOps project. Uh, please note that here is of course my own uh, organization and uh, you need to configure the path file uh, or the path variable. Uh, but that's something you already done with the environment variable. So let's execute this one. Mm -hmm. Let's do Terraform apply uh, minus F. Oh. Terraform apply test out. So I get back to you when this is done. So it says finished. Uh, if, you, if correctly, you would see that there is a new resource group called DevOps RG, which contains your build agent. And this build agent has a disk, and this disk is based on your Packer image. Next to that, you will also see there is a network configuration and a key vault uh, instance to store your uh, SSH keys, for example. So let's have a look now. Let's see if we can connect to this machine. So you just clicked on the build agent. Here you would see a connect button and here you see the command you can use to connect. So I just copy the command, now I'm pasting it in my terminal and you can see I can connect to my build agent on Azure. And also here you would see that I have a BSTS folder and an agent work folder in my home directory. So the last thing what I like to see is that this VM on Azure is actually connected to my Azure DevOps project correctly. So here uh, you see the previous screen, it was uh, still only recognizing my local host, which is my Vagrant box. Let's refresh it. Let's see what happens. Agents, and you will see here, I have a build agent one. So you see, it's very powerful stuff. Uh, you can configure many, many agents in your pool uh, if you like. So this is handy if you are using, for example, uh, uh, tests or load tests or whatever. Uh, and yeah, uh, cool stuff. So the last thing what I would like to show you is a uh, blog. Uh, this is, let's see. Uh, Azure has uh, created this service as a pass uh, offering. Uh, so it is still in private preview, but what will happen is basically that the, the service of creating a, a virtual image 
on Azure uh, will be uh, offered as a pass service. And here you see the extra features uh, what we have, for example, um, uh, interaction or uh, uh, using a subscription with Red Hat Cloud Access. Uh, there will be an uh, integration with pipelines and also uh, all in all very powerful stuff to create your golden images. So guys, hope you guys liked it and uh, this is the end of the demo.